Hey guys, so if you've seen the last episode of Cold Noir, you will have seen that we've included a lot of patents. I specifically stopped short of including this patent because after reading through it pretty thoroughly, I decided that this needed its own video. We're surrounded by so much technology and it has become so integrated into our lives that I don't think people even realize some of what these things can do. I honestly don't think at this point that we are taught traditionally almost anything about how the world actually works. They churn everybody out in public schools to walk around just blind to everything. Just a mindless consumer, no critical thought, just sitting in front of your television, being programmed. That's why they call it programming. This is one of the creepiest patents I've ever read. And it's a real pet. This is the thing. This, this is, I mean, you, you watch sci-fi shows and horror movies, and oh, that's scary for two hours, but you read something like this, and then you just start thinking about how everything really works. I mean, we've not been told. We, don't, we haven't been told how we work, okay? Let alone how everything else does. And then you come to something like this. So I have had this patent in a folder printed off for a while. I've been meaning to talk about it. And then I saw recently Richie from Boston covered this, actually. And I was like, wow, that's kind of rare that he got this sent to him, too. Good. I hope more people are talking about things like this. This is the kind of stuff that's actually going on in the reality that we're all sharing. This is United States patent number 6,506,148B2, dated January 14th, 2003. And this is the 10th in a series of patents by this particular man, all about manipulation of your nervous system, and in some ways, remote manipulation, subliminal manipulation, and he ended with this one here, nervous system manipulation by electromagnetic fields from monitors. And I just wanted to go over this with you because this is a thing that exists. And it existed over a decade ago, well before they made the switch, the forced switch to digital, where they can layer the signals. And if there is anything strange in that, you're not going to see the interference, right? This has to do with physiological effects that have been observed in human subjects in response to stimulation of the skin with weak electromagnetic fields pulsed with certain frequencies near half a hertz or 2.4 hertz, such as to excite a sensory resonance. Many computer monitors and TV tubes when displaying pulsed images emit pulsed electromagnetic fields of sufficient amplitudes to cause such excitation. It is therefore possible to manipulate the nervous system of a subject by pulsing images displayed on a nearby computer monitor or TV set. For the latter, the image pulsing may be embedded in a program material or overlaid by modulating a video stream, either as an RF signal or video signal. The image displayed on a computer monitor may be pulsed effectively by a simple computer program. For certain monitors, pulsed electromagnetic fields capable of exciting sensory resonances in nearby subjects may be generated even as the displayed images are pulsed with subliminal intensity. In other words, you don't even know they're doing it. And then he has all these lovely drawings to go with this, which are just great. Actually, I have a favorite. It's this one right here. Remote computer, internet, her computer, her monitor, her. You see that? They can do this remotely and you don't even know that it's being done to you. Well, there's the kids. Gotta have the kids in there. Anyway, he goes on to say that the electric field in studies by Norbert Wiener, that would be the father of cybernetics back during World War II and the Cold War, uh, was arranged to provide a direct electrical driving of the brain. That's what this kind of stuff is based on. And he goes on to say that it's been found that indeed physiological effects can be induced in the manner by very weak electric fields if they're pulsed with a frequency near half a hertz. The observed effects, which is just the ones they had for this particular patent, include ptosis of the eyelids, which means your eyelids close and flutter, relaxation, drowsiness, the feeling of pressure at a centered spot on the lower edge of your brow, seeing moving patterns of dark purple and greenish yellow when your eyes are closed, a tonic smile, a tense feeling in your stomach, sudden loose stool, and sexual excitement, all depending upon the precise frequency used and the skin area to which this field is applied. 
So you ever watch a movie and you're you're not really feeling it all that much. Let's say it's a romantic movie and you're not really feeling it and something happens and the two characters are swooning and they play that swell of music and even though you're not really feeling it and you kind of think the movie's lame you still get emotional and you start crying or like when people used to cry at long distance commercials back when we had long distance commercials I don't know I'm probably dating myself now and how old I am when I say stuff like that but the point is We've all had moments in watching movies or different things where your emotions don't match how you really feel based on the film. And you could just say that's creative filmmaking. But when you see something like this, you got to wonder, is it also something like this? Because they can do this. And he's saying right here they have the ability to. And if you read the first page again, this patent is based on years worth of other patents. So it isn't like he just came up with this off the spot. He's got 10 of his own patents based on doing this kind of stuff. Then he goes on to say in the summary that the implementation of the invention is adapted to the source of video stream that drives the monitor, be it a computer program, a TV broadcast, a videotape, or a DVD. And... A program written in Visual Basic is particularly suitable for use on computers that run Windows 95 or 98. That's how basic this technology is, okay? It does not take much. They could use Visual Basic to run it on Windows 95, okay? So, and this is all those years ago. I have no idea what they have today. And it is to the point that at the end of his own patent, in the summary, this man, Hendrickus Lewis, says, certain monitors can emit electromagnetic field pulses that excite a sensory resonance in a nearby subject through image pulses that are so weak as to be subliminal. This is unfortunate since it opens a way for mischievous application of the invention whereby people are exposed unknowingly to manipulation of their nervous systems for someone else's purposes. Such application would be unethical and is, of course, not advocated. It is mentioned here in order to alert the public to the possibility of covert abuse that may occur while being online, while watching TV, a video, or a DVD. I, I've read a lot of patents, actually, in my day, and I've never seen somebody warn in their own patent of the covert misuse of something the way that guy just did in his own patent. What makes it even more disconcerting is when you look up information about this and other people have looked up because they've seen all these patents and they went, what the hell? And if you go look at his history, it becomes much more disconcerting that he's coming up with these things. It wasn't like he just thought of this by himself and randomly came up with it. This is a guy who during the 50s was working with Plasmadyne Corporation and then Douglas Aircraft's Advanced Research Department. Douglas Aircraft, of course, linked to Lawrence Rockefeller, lots of black Cold War projects going on with them. Then he went on in the 80s and started working on government projects as a contractor with the likes of the Department of Defense, the Department of Health and Human Services, and the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA. So that's Hendrickus Luz, and they go on to say in this article that he had a website called qwave.com, but it's nothing more of a copy of a site. But I actually went back to the Wayback Machine and found the old website that this guy started. And after reading through Are You Sensitive to Electric Fields and the Q&A that he has here, I feel like the guy almost has remorse for what he's created, or he figured out through this series of patents that he put out over you know, the the 90s and the early 2000s that he was coming up with something that wasn't actually very good. And so he wanted to warn people about it. And that's kind of what I get, the sense I get from this website of his that he had up at the time. This is no longer a current website, but back in the day he had this and he said that depending on these frequencies, relaxation, drowsiness, sexual arousal, he knew he could cause all these things with this program. And he says that electric field pulses capable of exciting a sensory resonance can be generated by small insulated electrodes packed flat in the space of a credit card. So it doesn't take much for this. This can be just put right into the television monitor. It can be put right into your VCR, your VHS tapes. I mean, computer programs, anything, computer monitors, whatever, right? Since we cannot sense the field directly, our nervous system can thereby be manipulated covertly for someone else's purposes. And then he was selling for rather cheap, $14 at the time, 
a program that you could buy and put onto your computer and then you could test it on yourself to see how susceptible you are to this. And that's what his whole website is about. And then under the Q&A section, he's got all of his other patents. And like I said, you have everything here. Subliminal acoustic manipulation of your nervous system, manipulation of nervous systems by electric fields, magnetic excitation, pulsative manipulation. I mean, he's got it all right here. These are his 10 patents. And it ended with this one on monitors. And then he made this website. And the whole thing is just replete with him feeling... I think pretty badly about what he did. You have to understand, all of these science projects, right, the government has these contractors and they make things and they're very compartmentalized. And I don't think people a lot of times realize, not all the time, some people are just horrible people and they're just in things for bad means. But I think some people actually genuinely think, I'm an engineer, I'm a scientist, I'm doing good things. And they, they don't even have the foresight to realize what their stuff could be used for and that it could be used against the general public. That's what this patent is, and that's just one. There are a lot of others I'd like to go through. I have a whole thing of patents that I've printed off. I just have never had a chance to get to them all. But this particular one, it blows my mind because people just have no idea. We're walking around bathed in so much electromagnetic radiation right now, background. Human beings have never been exposed to the level that humanity is currently being exposed to in our modern technological age. And we're carrying cell phones in our pockets. We're sitting in front of our computer monitors. We're sitting in front of our television sets. And people just don't have any idea. The myriad uses that these things can be put to, all the stuff it can do, people are just blissfully ignorant. They don't know. And I personally don't want to go through life blissfully ignorant. I'd like to be informed. I mean, when I think of this, it, it reminds me of Videodrome. If you haven't seen the movie Videodrome, it's a very weird, creepy, violent movie. But they said in that movie, the battle for the minds of North America would be fought in the Videodrome. And it was about programming that was turning people violent and crazy. And... I mean, he mentioned some of the things that weak electromagnetic fields can do at certain pulsed frequencies, but he that was not an exhaustive list of everything that they can do. And I bet it's a lot more than just making people cry at sappy movies. All right? So I just thought you guys should be aware of that. You always get people coming into your videos and they say things like, what am I supposed to do with that information? Well, it's supposed to help empower you to at least know that this is a thing that exists. And so you're not just walking around an ignorant victim. It's not supposed to scare you. It's supposed to empower you. I at least hope that that's what the videos that I make do.